Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you guys an update to my Gishki Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile for the end of August 2017. It's a really uh, fun deck profile, it's one of my favorite uh, ritual based decks and one of my favorite decks overall. Had a lot of fun with this deck over the years and I've actually been quite a while since I've done an update to this deck profile. I think uh, when I was doing the uh, deck revisions for the entire deck as a whole for this new format. I still had my old uh, Vanity's Emptiness in the deck, so it just goes uh, how long it's actually been since I've played this deck. But I definitely want to test it out just to see how it does in the new format since it is a ritual-based deck. It wasn't affected too, too much by the uh, whole new format change since the big play still involves getting out your Gishki ritual monsters. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the deck profile. Uh, to start off, for the Ritual Monsters, my favorite lineup that I like to do is Gishki Zilgagus, uh, mostly because Gus Kraken and Mindogus have been hit on the ban list for being overly powerful with their effects of reshuffling and shuffling cards from your opponent's hand back into the deck. Uh, I like Zilgagus because he's powerful and there are Gishki monsters in the deck that you can use for the entire cost for his Ritual Summon, otherwise he would be a very immense cost being at level 10. Uh, and its effect is you can ritual summon this card with any Gishki ritual spell card. And once per turn, you can pay 1,000 life points to draw one card and reveal it. And if it was a Gishki monster, shuffle one card on the field into the deck. A very powerful effect since a lot of these uh, cards nowadays revolve around uh, graveyard uh, destruction effects or uh, as such. Shuffling back into the deck uh, really hurts them since it gets rid of a card entirely. Uh, the only thing is the 1,000 points can uh, be costly, so just be wary when you're using them. Uh, other than that, if you get two of these out and have two successful shufflebacks with their effects, you can go for some pretty heavy damage, and there is an OTK potential, which I'll show later on in the video that you can do with this card as well. I'm also now trying one backup Gishki uh, Ritual Monster in the deck. I'm trying out Eva Gishki Levianima. Uh, you can try Soul Ogre, the one Gus Kraken, or even the one Mind August, whatever you think is most comfortable for you with your Ritual lineup. Uh, for now, like I said, Levianima though, for that power base and draw power. Uh, you can Ritual Summon this with any Gishki Ritual spell, and when it declares an attack, draw one card. If you do, reveal it. And then if it was a Gishki monster, look at one random card in your opponent's hand. So, the one random card in your opponent's hand. It's more of just a bonus since you do get to draw a card with this card as well. Uh, the only thing is his requirement is a attack based one and there are a lot of times when you can uh, greatly reduce if you don't have the rituals to go into. Having that four lineup in my opinion is just much more consistent than the three I used to have and this card is searchable all four of the rituals with other cards in the deck which we'll get to in a little bit. And then for the normal effect, Gishki Monsters, I run three Gishki Shadow. This card, along with Gishki Vision, have search effects, and they can both be used for the entire uh, cost for the tribute. And if you ritual summon a ritual monster, um, you could discard this card to add one uh, Gishki Ritual spell from your deck to your hand. So along with being the entire cost for the tribute, you can also ditch him to search for Gishki Aquamere, which is the ritual spell card you use to get off your ritual summons in the deck. And also, I run three Gishki Vision. He has the same discard effect, and he can also be used for the entire cost of the ritual. But Gishki Vision, uh, when you can discard him, you can add the Gishki Ritual Monster. So using both Vision and Shadow together can grab you exactly what you need for the ritual. Uh, basically grabbing the ritual monster you want, along with the a spell card, and as long as you have other cards in your hand to use for the cost for the ritual, you have your summon right then and there. And also, three Gishki Beast. Now, I like this card. Originally, I liked him for the fact that you could, when this card is normal summon, target one level four lower Gishki monster in your graveyard, special summon that target in face up defense. So you could grab uh, basically Gishki Shadow with this card and then go into your Exceed summon right there with the two. Um, it's still a very possible play since um, you still have the extra monster zone to go into. And this deck doesn't swarm too, too many Exceed monsters, but like I said, that's still a play option that you can go into. But I also like like this for the fact that you can use him, special summon this to the field, and on the field this card can still ca count as the whole cost for the tribute. So giving you that monster back from the graveyard after you use its effect for the ritual summon. 
My favorite though of all the Gishki effect monsters is Gishki Abyss. When I say search, he has the best search potential. Uh, when it is summoned, you can add one Gishki monster with 1,000 or less defense from your deck to your hand, except for Abyss. This can basically search out most of the monsters, um, Beast and Levianima being the exceptions there, but you have searches off of the Vision in the Shadow, or if you just want to go straight for the Zeal, you have that, and it's a summon one, so it can even be special summon or normal summon, depending on what you want to do. You can even special summon it off of Beast, and get these searched that way, or other methods as well, including uh, Butunaful Princess, which I run two of. When it's normal or special summon, you can banish this card to special summon one level four lower fish type monster from your deck, except for Butunaful Princess. You can only use this effect once per turn. Uh, like I said, fish monster, which is Gishki Abyss, banish the special, get him in defense and get your search off. He has very low attack otherwise and can be easily run over and you can take some heavy damage. Uh, but I like the Butunaful play just for that safe special summon. You'll get your search and have him in defense and possibly use for maybe a uh, exceed or synchro play later on. And I also like to run one Deep Sea Diva. This card is a tuner, along with the effect of when it's normal summon, special summon one level, uh, three or lower Sea Serpent type monster from your deck. Uh, the grab for her search would be uh, Gishki Vision for that Sea Serpent play. And just like Gishki Beast's play, when you get uh, Vision out on the field, there's your cost right there, or you have an exceed play or a level four synchro play if you might want to do. And to finish up the monsters, I run one Gen X Ally Birdman. This card is played mostly for the fact of the bounce special summon play. You can get off. I like to bounce Gishki Abyss with his play. After I use its effect for the search, I bounce him to special summon out the Birdman, and then I can even possibly reuse the Abyss if I haven't used up my normal summon yet that turn to grab another card off of it. And that's it for monsters. We will move on to spells. I run three Gishki Aquamere. Uh, this card is used to ritual summon one Gishki ritual monster. You can must also tribute monsters from your field or hand whose total levels equal the level of the ritual monster you ritual summon. You can return this card from the graveyard to the deck to add one Gishki ritual monster in your graveyard and return it to your hand. So recycle power is very important with this card for the fact that after you ritual summon, you can use its effect to add the ritual uh, ritual monster from your graveyard back to your hand. So in the case of Gishki uh, Zeogagus. Let's say I activate Gishku Aquamir and I use Zeogagus for the cost for the entire ritual for Zeogagus. That gives me the two uh, requirements that I need in the deck. So I shuffle Aquamir back, add Zeogagus back to my hand, which in turn uh, makes sure I don't have anything dead in the graveyard. The only thing is you'll have to re-add Aquamir with either Shadow or something like that. But the recycle power is great, especially since I can go for the draw off of Zeogagus with his effect potentially drawing Aquamere again, and if you have the life points to spare, you can basically then use Aquamere once more, using the Zeogigas on the field this time, to add the one you recently added back, and use that draw effect, but before that, obviously, try and your shuffle back, because there's a chance you could basically draw again, and keep sifting through those cycles, and shuffling back with your opponent. It's a really fun, but risky play, all in the same. Also, three, Salvage. This card with Vision and Shadow is very important uh, to keep your hand consistency going. You target two water monsters with 1,500 or less attack in your graveyard, add them to your hand. You can even add Abyss if you want to, um, or even uh, Gishki Beast. Um, you have options um, with all your monsters in this deck with this card. Two good, three max. You will get the searches off. If you open up Salvage, um, Shadow, and Vision, Ditch for the searches, salvage adds them back. You can even ditch for more searches if you want. And having two Zeogigas and two Aquamir in your hand with this, if you have the one ritual cost as well, you can get off that play I was talking about earlier pretty consistently. And two surface, this card uh, works great because it targets uh, one level three or lower fish, sea serpent, or aqua type monster in your graveyard and special summon it in face of defense. You can get your ritual cost if you grab vision or you can even get the special summon search play off with abyss if you special summon that. I'm also trying out two Moreo Greed, just for some recycle uh, consistency with some draws. There are situations in which I will open up Beast and, let's say, uh, Zeogigas. I have these two cards in hand and some other staples, but with these two cards, let alone, there's no play that I can do. But if I have Moreo Greed, I can shuffle them back, draw three, and hopefully get a more consistent hand that I can play with. 
and also three mystical space typhoon if you want to try twin twister or um uh, yeah, what is it cosmic cyclone you can do that as well the only thing is uh twin twister yeah it gets some gishkis in the graveyard you can work with but this hand this deck does have hand consistency troubles i might try maxi to help that but that's just a one card play that doesn't always work out uh, mst is just for that you know back row hate that you know if you ritual summon and they warning it hurts you immensely with the play that costs you pretty big to try and get off and also the one dark hole to finish up the spells. If you want to run Regeki, go ahead and try that as well. Um, it's just, um, you know, Regeki is all over the place. Since I don't have as many Regekis as dark hole, I use that just as my basis to show you what I run in the deck. And now moving on to traps, I run one Aquamere Meditation. This card, uh, you reveal a ritual spell card in your hand, target up to two Gishki monsters in your graveyard, return them to your hand. In a sense, it's the same as Salvage, just a trap set that you can use to mix up either back row if they destroy it, chain off the play. A really cool play to go off of. And I'm also trying now two back to the front. I was running um, the Oasis trap card that special summons in defense, but that's basically called the Haunted and it's special summons in defense. Back to the front's just so much better. You could special summon your Gishki Abyss or anything else that you need for your play and not have to worry about your opponent blowing up the trap card and in the sense losing your monster from that as well. This card's just so much better since it also special summons in defense. You won't have to worry about them attacking in and taking damage off of cards like Abyss when you do summon it. And then also one bottomless trap hole, one compulsory evacuation device, and one torrential tribute finish off the trap lineup. Uh, I don't run Solemn Morning just because of Zeogaikus' cost of 1,000 life points. It's just too risky to run life point uh, cost pairs in this deck for the fact that you want to save them all completely for his effect. And moving on to the extra deck, I run one Gustav Max. This card is your OTK potential with the deck. You basically attack with both your Zeogigas, then overlay into this for 2,000 more damage. That's your game right there, um, you know, saying that your opponent is at 8,000 life points when you do do this play. Really awesome play if you do get it off, though. And then one Sky Palace Gongra die. Same uh, play concept with this, except for the fact that this card can pop a card and then inflict 1,000 points of damage. So he's also a pretty more powerful card you can go into. But like I said, backup scenario play that you want to do with him. And one Herald of Pure Light. I like this card for the recycle abilities you can do. And plenty of level 2 monsters you can use to overlay with this as well. Uh, and then for the rank 4s, one Abyss Dweller. Water effects, really good. One Dark Rebellion. And one Castell. And then for the Synchro Monsters, I run one Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, with uh, Birdman, and then mix up between Deep Sea Diva and all your other monsters. Very possible to get this card out. Um, I just like to have that option available. Uh, Gunnir, I actually go into Gunnir more than Trishula at times. He's got that uh, water requirement, which this deck can easily play out in his destruction of capabilities. Uh, Delorean as well, with uh, level 4 and 2 to make him. Uh, Bryonic also being off the list uh, helps as well. We got all the Ice Barrier options uh, in this deck, which I think is really fun just to do in total as well. And for the last of the Synchros, one Black Rose Moonlight Dragon. If you want to run Black Rose, you could swap that out as well. Uh, one Leo. This is in for the Levy Anima ritual uh, Synchro play you can do with D.Va. And one Herald of the Arc Light to finish that off as well. And then I also just have the two Deco Talker in. Uh, there are times when I do have lots of monsters on the field that were sworn from special summoning, which I don't have anything to do with at times if I don't have the ritual requirements. Uh, let's say like I use a surface to get a vision on the field, Abyss adds a card and I normal summon it. Those kind of situations where, you know, otherwise they're going to get run over next turn, Deco Talker just helps for that easy link summon play you can do. And yeah, that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Once again, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And until next time, Kira Twig out.